Our question says, Sarah built a birdhouse as shown and wants to paint the outside of it. State which formulas you would use to help her calculate how much paint she would need to use. Explain in words how you would modify or use each formula to help her calculate the amount of paint needed. So the first thing I notice in this question, there are no numbers on that diagram. And in the question, it really just asked for us to say which formulas we would use to find how much paint she was going to need. And then we have to talk about how we would modify. Modify means change. How am I going to change that formula um, as needed to calculate the actual um, surface area? So I just ruined the surprise there. Uh, this is a surface area question. So it is asking us how much paint she would need to paint the birdhouse. So when she's painting the birdhouse, she's not filling the inside up with paint, right? That's what volume is. Volume is the inside space. So if she was trying to fill the inside with paint, then that would be volume. But since she just wants to paint the outside, we want to know how much surface she needs to cover, which is our surface area. So first thing you want to try to do is look at your picture and think about the different volumetric solids and try to figure out what shapes are there. So if I look at my formula sheet, I do notice there aren't any curves except for in the hole. Um, it's mostly straight sides, which makes me think it's going to be one of the bottom three shapes. So a square base pyramid, a rectangular prism, or a triangular prism. So when I look at this, I think the bottom part, so if I cut it along here, I think this bottom part is a rectangular prism. And then the top part is either a square base pyramid or a triangular prism. And I often get questions about how can you tell the difference. So if something is a square base pyramid, all the edges should meet at a point at the top. And if it's a triangular prism, I know this diagram is terrible, but the sides of the triangle are going to meet at a line at the top. So when I look at this, I've got my triangle and it's a line along here. They're not all meeting at a singular point. So I think that this shape is a rectangular prism It's a triangular prism. And I'm not going to ignore the hole. There is also a circle cut out. So if I was painting this side of the rectangular prism, I wouldn't paint where the hole is. Um, so there's also a circular hole that are in there. Okay, so it asked me to identify what formulas I would use and then talk about how we would change those formulas. So I'm going to start over in our space um, by listing the three shapes and then writing down what the formulas are for those shapes. And I'm going to try to leave a little bit of space. So we have a rectangular prism. And the formula for a rectangular prism, um, according to EQAO, they did two times width height plus length width plus length height. Um, I prefer the multiplied out version, so two width height plus two length width plus two length height, because it's easier if I have to remove sides to see my formula this way. So I'm going to write down two width height plus two length width plus two length height. My area is two width height plus two length width plus two length height. And I'm going to leave a little space. I'm going to do the triangular prism. So the formula for the surface area of a triangular prism is AH plus BH plus CH plus BL. And then our last one is the circle. So you won't find the circle on this side of the sheet. You need to go to the other side of the sheet to find the circle. 
Um, and the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, so that's the first part of the question done. It said state which formulas you would use to calculate how much paint she needs. So I would use the formula for a rectangular prism, a triangular prism, and a circle. But then the second part is, is how would I change those formulas to make it work for this specific shape? So if I start with the rectangular prism that's there, a rectangular prism has six sides. It has a front and a back, it has a top and a bottom, and then it has our two edges on the, two ends on the sides. So if I think about the birdhouse, um, does it have a front and a back? It has a front, there's a hole in it, but there's definitely a front and there should be a back. Does it have a top and a bottom? Well, it's going to have a bottom or the birds would fall out. Um, does it have a top? Well, the top would be if there was one on the inside of the shape and we are not painting the inside of that birdhouse. So there is going to be no top. Um, and then if I look at the two ends, is there a side here? Yes, is there going to be a matching side on the other side? I think so, otherwise why would there be a hole if a whole side was missing? So of this shape, there are really only five outside sides. There's the front and the back, the two sides, and the bottom. The top, if they built it, is inside the shape. They probably didn't put it in there at all, but it doesn't matter because it's inside the shape and we are not painting anything inside. So I would remove the top, which would be length and width. So I would modify my formula by, uh, I'm going to remove the top side. Now I need to get rid of a length width. So we currently have two length widths. That's because one is the top and one is the bottom. So I'm going to say by changing two length width to one length width. So you could subtract a length width, that would work as well, but you need to definitely remove that top side because it's inside your shape. All right, if I think about my triangular prism next, this one is tricky because the diagram is not great on the formula sheet. So the most important thing when you're trying to use this formula is to always look for your triangle and then go from there and it'll help you at least try to figure out where things are. So if I look at this shape, a triangular prism has a triangle on the top and a triangle on the bottom, or a triangle at the front and a triangle at the back, and then it has three rectangular sides on the outside. So does this shape have the two triangles? It's got the triangle on the front and there should be a matching triangle on the back. So I think the triangles are still there. And then it has three rectangular sides. So there's one rectangular side here. There's one matching rectangular side on the other side of that roof. But the side that's on the bottom would be inside the shape. So we wouldn't paint that. If they put it in, it's inside the shape. They actually probably left it out. Uh, but since it's on the middle and it's inside the shape, we wouldn't be painting it. So we would need to remove the bottom of the triangle. Now the bottom of the triangle is probably base, so that would be this particular rectangle here, which would be base times height. Now if you said it was A times height or C times height, I mean really, and that depends on how you look at your picture, but I'm going to say that this is the base and then it would be times height. So for my triangular prism, we need to remove the bottom. I'm going to say the bottom rectangle. By uh, taking the base times height out of the formula. You also could say by subtracting BH from the formula, that would also do the same thing. All right, the last part is the circle. So we're not changing the formula of the circle, but we are going to subtract the area of the circle from the rectangular prism. 
So I'm going to write here, we're going to subtract the area of the circle from the rectangular prism. So when you're doing one of these questions or any surface area question that's a composite shape, you always want to think, are there parts of this shape that are inside because surface area is only the outside of the shape? Um, and then if so, what part of the formula would I have to change? So in this case, we would have to take the top off of our rectangular prism by taking out one of the length widths. We would take the bottom off the triangular prism by taking out the base height, and then we would subtract a circle from those areas um, by subtracting pi r squared. 